Hey everyone, Brian here, back with the games I beat for March and April of 2023. Uh, we'll start off with the big one, Octopath Traveler 2. It's a Japanese role-playing game by Asano from Squaresoft. Um, I love the first Octopath Traveler. It's basically eight adventurers, and you pick them up along the way. They each have their own stories, which are really nice, simple, fun stories. They have their own motives. This one's much like the same. You pick up eight new travelers. Um, there's Hikari the warrior, Agnia the dancer, Particio, one of my favorites, the merchant, Oswald the scholar, magician, um, what was her name? Casti, the apothecary who mixes like ingredients together and can like use healing items or buffs and stuff like that. Um, uh, the hunter is... I forget her name. She's very wholesome. She, like she's out and she like picks a, at the beginning you pick like one of your two animals to follow you around. Basically almost like a Pokemon. But uh, Ochette, that's her name, Ochette. Um, I really like her too. Um, Throne the Thief, who was my starter. So you pick one starter and that's in your party until you beat her story and then you can take her out. Um, so I picked Throne into the Thief so I could have Stealing always there. And then there's um, the Cleric, which is... Shoot, I forget the Cleric's name. Uh, he's this... Um, basically, Temenos. That's his name. Temenos. He's like a Inquisitor, like, um, but he's very suspecting of the Church. Um, so he's a really cool character. All the characters are great. They all have great stories. Um, basically, you pick one character, you start a sim, and then you can explore the world. And you pick up, like, all the other characters that join your party, and then you can play their chapters of their stories in any order you want. Um, I put a lot of time into this game, like, over 200 hours, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, I was a little over-leveled because... What I'd do is I'd make sure everybody was on the same like level so I get like one person and then I explore everything I could and level up and I get another person explore everything more I could with their path actions and stuff I go back and they have path actions like stealing uh, recruiting and you can you can switch to day and night with the trigger they uh the flip of the trigger like your bumper or your trigger button and then different people do different things during the day and night. You can steal different things with Throne or uh, Temenos can like inc um, uh, inquisit against people and get information. Um, so you can, and it's, it's just a flip of a button. So you don't have to wait. It's like switches from day to night. That's kind of cool. The world is great to explore. That's the biggest thing about this game I love is the world. Just going to different towns. Each character in the town has their own story. And you can you know, get information from them with your path actions. It tells more of the story of that character. And depending on what the story is, you can read it and um, do different quests. So maybe this guy wants something, but you can only get it at night. And he says, well, I, this guy is working for me. He hasn't, he's been late what's wrong and you he's not getting his sleep and then you got to figure out how to make him sleep and you can knock him out and put him to sleep and then he gets rest and then he can finish that quest um each character is very fleshed out um and then once you beat all their stories you come together for one final chapter and you fight a end boss uh, which is an improvement over octopath one i loved octopath one um a lot quite a bit but to and people say that, it, that their story is done interconnect that's not true they do interconnect but to do that you have to beat a super boss which is kind of i don't like um the super boss was really hard and that's the only way to find out how their paths interconnect this one you can find them out without doing the super boss so it's a little more if you don't want to do the super boss, you don't have to, and you can still find out how everything connects. So this one makes that the connecting path a lot easier, so you don't have to beat a super boss and put all that time in to do it. Um, really love the Octopath Traveler too. Really love the first Octopath Traveler. I think either one you get, you know, play it. It's fun. Um, if you want to see like not have to do a super boss to 
see how everything connects, then play Octopath Traveler 2. Um, they improved the look of this game quite immensely. Like, HD 2D is beautiful. I love it. Sound, this track is mwah. Venice Muche, I think they say. Mwah. It's great. Super soundtrack. Um, uh, just super game. You can see it right there. Um, I was hooked on it for a long time. But by the end, after putting 200 hours in it, I was ready for it to be you know, over with. And I, I'm not in the mood for another RPG for some climb because of this. Um, but it's, it's still a great super game. It's not that I didn't like it. It's just that I put so much time into it that, you know, after 200 hours, that's a long time to play a game. Um, but loved it. Loved every second of it. Octopath Traveler 2. If you like old pixel RPGs, great stories. Battle system is still the same. They did add some things in battle system where you have latent powers. So when you fill up a meter um, during battle, when you do stuff and you get hit, take damage, you'll fill up a meter. When that's full, each character has a latent power you can access with the X button. And that latent power may be break each other. Uh, Temenos has like break the character's shield with any attack or Portichia is like give full boost mode um, to yourself. Um, stuff like that, which is really cool. There's a lot of options in the battle system. And I gotta say, like, if you want to get into a battle system, this is a great game to get into. Be great battle system, I think. Um, not for everybody, if you don't like the boost mode, for sure. Um, uh, but it's still a fun game. Really like it. Really like it a lot. Next, so Mega Man. I got in the mood for Mega Man games, and I never played the Game Boy Mega Man games, so that's what I'm, I did. I started out with Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, a very early Mega Man game. Basically, it takes the ro four Robot Masters from Mega Man 1, you beat them, then you go four Robot Masters Mega Man 2, and there's like a Mega Man killer that Wily created after you, I forget his name, and then you fly into space and you fight Wily. Um... Difficult, short, but decent. Decent game. Mega Man 2 takes four Robot Masters from Mega Man 2, and then four from Mega Man 3, I believe. And then you have Rush. I don't know if you have the slide or not. I'm not sure if you do or not. Um, I don't think you do until 3, but improves on the first game. A lot easier than the first game. Um, you can see them making improvements. Um... I like this one better than one. They're still decent. Then Mega Man 3 improves on 2 and 1 as well. This one is the only Mega Man game that does not have a boss rush in it, which is pretty interesting. I like it for that fact. I don't really like the Mega Man boss rushes. So this one I like the most out of the first 2, 3 so far. And then Mega Man 4. Oh, actually, I showed... I'm sorry. I showed... This was Mega Man 4. This was Mega Man 3. So Mega Man 3, no boss rush. Uh, Mega Man Robot Masters from 3 and 4. And like I said, no boss rush, which is a good plus. Then Mega Man 4 takes Robot Masters from 4 and 5, I think. Um, charge attack, slide. Um, boss rush is back. Um, long level. Some of these games have like... Mega Man 3, instead of having a boss rush, I should say has one long super level, which I kind of liked. Um, Mega Man 4 has a boss rush, but it has a nice another long level near the end. So the Wily Castles aren't really too long in this game. It's like broken up into four bosses, a little in mid-stage, and then like four bosses and then a Wily part. Um, fun game. This is probably one of my favorites, other than three and four are probably my favorite out of the ones I played. I still have to play five. Uh, yeah, Mega Man on Game Boy, pretty decent games. They each get incrementally better, and I like three because it doesn't have a boss rush. Next up, uh, my friend had this game of, like, most kids my age, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog. Never beat Sonic the Hedgehog on the actual Sega Genesis. I only beat it on the 3DS with save states, and so I finally buckled down and I did it um, and beat Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, had trouble, pretty easy going until the last stage with the underwater stage, which I used up my lives and I had to redo it. But I did beat it. Fun, fun, good, finally glad to beat Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, these, this is a game that 
is short and I kind of like the slow pace of it minus the water levels near the end. Um, you don't have to always run real fast in this one, which I kind of appreciate. Um, in the later Sonic games, you kind of have to always, I guess you don't have to always run, but I like the slow pace of this one. And I beat Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and never beat this without, uh, except on the 3DS with save states. Um, this is a lot of people's favorite and I still really like it. Good game. I didn't like the end boss with Robotnik though. The timing on jumping and hitting his little belly without getting hit by his arm spikes was very tough. Um, and you gotta do like Metal Sonic and him without any rings. It's kind of I, I don't like that. It's kind of BS there, but I did do it. Stuck with it. Good. Finally beat it a lot longer than the other ones. The stages are a lot more built for a lot of speed. Um, this is a lot of people's favorites, like I said. I did beat this before with my friend um, and co-op, which was kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, so that is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Finally beat that. Yeah, I beat it with my friend like a long while ago, at least five, six years ago. Um, next up we have three Xbox games. We have dun 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 It belongs in the museum. Uh, this game is very good. I like this. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb for the Xbox Lucas Arts. And I forget who developed it. Um, I want to say the Collective developed it. They did a few games. I don't know what else they did, but they did a good job. Basically, it takes place before M Temple of Doom. Um, you basically, Indiana Jones, you go to different locales. You have a, And you have a whip to swing across gaps. You have fighting. When enemies appear, you can punch and you can like grab them, push them. Um, you can like throw, push them off a cliff. You can get a gun so you can shoot them. The fighting in this game is very funny. Um, it's very hilarious. I, I I was laughing a lot just fighting because you're like filling around, throwing guys, and it's just very funny. Um, goes on for a little long, but it does have a good story. Basically, it feels like an Indiana Jones game. You see your plane going from on the map to a different X and stuff. Um, yeah, it's very good. Um, looks good, sounds good. Basically, you have to go to the emperor, of, one of the emperor of China's tomb, and you fight like at the end, you fight some of those big terracotta soldiers. You go all over the world, and it's, it's, it feels like an Indiana Jones adventure. Very fun game. Recommend it. I think it's on PC too. Maybe PS2, I don't know. Then another movie game, From Russia With Love. I like the James Bond movies. Um, I used to watch them when there was like 15 days of 007 on like TBS during Thanksgiving growing up. And From Russia with Love was a good one. That's like Sean Connery's second one, I think. I think it was Sean Connery's favorite one. Um, but they actually got him to come by and do, this was his last performance. He did the voice acting for this game. And there's a unlockable here, which you can watch the video and it's interviewing him about the game. It's kind of interesting. Um, but it basically goes through the movie and the events are kind of out of order. They use the same dialogue, but in different places. So it's not one to one, but you have a gun you can lock on. The shooting's fun. You have like driving stages in the Aston Martin or the Bunkar shooting. And you have like a speedboat stage, lots of variety. Um, pretty fun. There is a co-op not a co-op, but a multiplayer too, which was big at the time. This came out around 2005. So co-op was a big thing. Um, very fun game. It's on PSP as well. If you like James Bond games and you haven't played this, it's a third person action game. Um, s some, not, not like, you don't really do a lot of platforming, but you do a lot of action. Um, you, when you get up to a guy, you can like punch him and like go up stealth behind him and knock him out and stuff. It's fun. Oh yeah, this game. Panzer Dragoon Orca, my first Panzer Dragoon game. Uh, great game. Almost like a rail shooter like Star Fox, but you can flip yourself 
around to get the enemy's weak point and shoot it for damage. So you have to do that in order to survive. And the last boss of this game is very tough. It's like 10 episodes. And the last boss was super tough. Um, I had to really buckle down and get my trajectory around the boss and stuff. Um, and you, most of my deaths came from, okay, if you're spinning around, you get to a point where you can't spin around anymore. You're knocked in a corner. And if he's firing at you and you can't avoid it by going away, then you take damage. So you have to look at kind of like the map at the top. And even then, I still couldn't get my bearings. Um, the last boss took me a really long time. <laughs> Uh, and I finally beat him. I was really excited. Sense of accomplishment. Um, super fun game. You can lock on, shoot on a dragon, and get, you have two diff three different dragons you can shoot. Switch to one's the base dragon, all around good. Two is like your heavy dragon, does the most damage, but no lock on. And three is your maneuverability. You can get more dodges, and and you have like a homing attack that isn't too strong. And that's uh, Panzer Dragon. Dragon, excuse me, Orta have the hiccups. And that's all the games I beat for March and April 2023. Um, some good ones here. I'm glad I bit, got some Xbox. It's been a while since I played some Xbox games. And I've been wanting to play Indiana Jones. I mean, of course, I, I got them a long time ago. But I got them because I wanted to play them. So I finally played them. And it's, it's a good feeling to get a game and say, oh, yeah, I got that. And I played it and I finished it. I mean, because that's what games are. You're supposed to play your games. So play your games uh finally played the Mega Man games on game boy that's good and beat sonic one and two for the first time that's also good and octopath is a great great one of my favorites now so it was a good few months i want to thank you for watching everybody have a great rest of your week or rest of whenever or rest of whatever day you're having and i will talk to you soon